NASA JPL's beautiful Orbit Pavilion here on display at the Huntington Library Art Museum and Botanical Gardens in San Marino. This is a wonderful exhibit. It's a visual representation of 19 Earth satellites plus the International Space Station as they orbit our beautiful world. So each track represents the tracks of the satellites and each sound is a distinctive sound that artistically represents what each satellite studies. So for example, a satellite like CloudSat that measures the movements of the clouds and wind is represented by the sound of desert wind. Other satellites that measure things like the amount of moisture in the soil, the amount of green cover on the earth, the sea level rise, the amount of ice lost or gained, sadly too much lost right now. At the poles, all these things are represented by distinctive sounds. And what is really cool is that the International Space Station, which is the only satellite represented here that actually carries humans on it, is represented by a human choir. So all these sounds, and it sort of sounds like Forbidden Planet, one of my favorite sci-fi movies, but it has a wonderfully, it has a wonderfully evocative feeling to it, and I love anything creative that explains science. So this is a wonderful example, again, designed by NASA JPL, with a group of artists and sound designers, representing 19 Earth satellites plus the International Space Station or the pavilion. Oh, and the design of it, which looks like a Nautilus shell, is meant to evoke the fact that when you hold up a Nautilus shell to your ear, you can hear the sea inside. So that's why they designed it like a large Nautilus shell, because it helps you to hear sounds of things that you actually normally would not be able to hear, like satellites orbiting our Earth. So one of the most interesting and inspiring things I've ever done was a number of years ago I attended a two-day NASA Earth Science Social at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So this is a two-day conference at which about a hundred of us got to hear from all of these Earth scientists working on incredibly important missions, studying every aspect of the physical makeup of our world. So we got to do things like visit the clean room and see one of the satellites being assembled. We went to mission control where they track the satellites. We also went to the Mars yard. Okay, that has nothing to do with Earth science, but still studying Mars helps us understand the Earth better too. Here I am inside NASA JPL's Mission Control, where mission teams gather for planetary encounters and landings, and where they send commands to and receive data back through the Deep Space Network. This is the clean room where they've assembled spacecraft since the early 1960s, and the Mars Yard, where they test proof test models of the Mars rovers, like this model of the Curiosity rover behind me. It was an absolutely incredible opportunity to hear firsthand from these scientists, and I really got to understand how the Earth is such an interconnected mechanism, because they explain so well all the feedback mechanisms that go into the environment of our planet. So for example, if the green cover changes, if sea levels rise, or there's less ice at the poles, or more different levels of gases in the atmosphere, all of these affect everything else. So, it's like a great 3D visualization to learn about these satellites and to see the Earth from their viewpoint. It's absolutely fascinating. One of the other really cool things about JPL is that JPL, of course, built the first ever Earth science satellite that made the first discovery of the space age. So, America's first space mission was Explorer 1, launched in January 1958, and it carried instruments designed by James Van Allen, a great scientist from the University of Iowa, and his instruments discovered the Van Allen radiation belts. This was incredibly important because the Van Allen radiation belts actually helped protect the Earth from harmful radiation coming from outside. So the Van Allen radiation belts and a number of other discoveries that James Van Allen made with subsequent missions helped explain how it is that the Earth that life will live on Earth, despite really cosmic rays, ultraviolet rays, rays from the sun. So it was a very important discovery. Explorer 1 was the first object to orbit the Earth that carried scientific instruments and made the first scientific discovery of the space age, the discovery of the Van Allen radiation belts, and thus it was the first Earth science mission. So I really love learning about all these things. I mean, of course, I'm a huge fan of space science and space exploration. I love all of NASA's missions to Mars and Venus and Jupiter and Saturn and Pluto and everywhere else. And of course, I have a special fondness in my heart for JPL, which is right here in Los Angeles. So all these incredible missions to other planets are really inspiring and help broaden our horizons. But ultimately, I truly think that the most important planet to study is our Earth. Because we live here and it's the only planet in the entire universe we know of so far that has life on it and even more importantly, sentient life. So, I love Earth science. 
I, I encourage you to learn more about it and to have great appreciation for the important work of our Earth scientists and our Earth science missions. Thank you so much.